welcome, and thank you very much for uh, coming along today. So we're, we're going to talk about the key thing that is going to make a, a difference here, which is how do we energize and, and change um, the Gulf ecosystem to, um, to become truly innovative. Uh, so I'm joined here today by a, a great panel. So we're going to start with Mohammed here. Quickly, just introduce yourself. Uh, my name is Mohamed Al Khalifa from the Economic Development Board. I currently uh, am in special projects. Our goal, really, in special projects is to look at a wide spectrum of items in, 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 with that relate to investment in Bahrain that don't traditionally fit within the KPIs of the traditional business development departments. Uh, most of my work has been around cloud and growing the cloud ecosystem uh, and pushing innovation through both government from a policy perspective as well as working with companies directly. Fantastic. Khaled? My name is Khaled Zain Al Abidin, CEO of Atqan Financial. It's a regulated investment firm based in the Kingdom of Bahrain. We focus mainly on venture capital related investments and private equity advisory investments. Mirza? Yeah, my name is Mirza Sarbeg. I'm the founder of CTM 360. That's what a lot of people know me from. But I've extracted out of CTM 360 the team of R&D, and I've set up a separate company, EDX Labs. And we're already working on a few more technologies. I've launched DMARC 360 and Pentest 360 and one more company. Fantastic. And our special guest. Yeah, Good morning. Same. Assalamu alaikum. Sorry, I was uh, engaged with Mr. Khal's speech, so I was very into it. Uh, my name is Hussain al Mahmoudi. I'm the chief executive officer of Sharjah Research and Technology Park and American University of Sharjah Enterprise. Okay, and a little bit about myself. So, uh, my name is Frank Min. Uh, I'm the co-founder of what's now the largest pan Asia accelerator, early stage, and, and follow-on investment group. So, we're in Korea, China, Taiwan, Hong Kong, Singapore, Australia, and now we're moving into the Middle East. We're in Amman, in Muscat, um, backed by PDO with our energy program. Uh, so, we are incredibly interested in the and working very hard on the um, integration of uh, work between Asia and the Middle East, which is what I'm really fascinated on. So we're going to start, we're going to kick off. So we're going to start this with kind of a structure. And I'm sure a lot of people here are familiar with the challenges. What we're going to try and do is we're going to try and get solutions out of the panel today. So we're going to start off with the first start, Angel. Angel in investing, and um, which is very early here. Um, you know, it, it, it's, it's early, There's, we don't really have the family offices putting investment into it, and we don't really have yet, you know, the big VCs that have come down to help, help the infrastructure. So, Khaled, you're deeply involved in this. Why don't you kick sure. off and tell us sure. what are the four things that need to change? I, I think we can, we can go on all day if we would speak about <laughs> early stage investment, but if we really focus on the core pillar, which is, which is angel investing, uh, it is at a very nascent stage, uh, at the stage in the region. And uh, to build basically the angel uh, uh, networks and platform, we would foresee basically four initiatives that, that I feel the region has to focus on when it comes to angel investing. Uh, the first of which would be encouraging and developing angel networks, communities. This is something that is currently lagging uh, in the region. If we look and benchmark at the international uh, markets in the Far East and Far East Asia, in Europe, in the US, uh, angel networks and communities have definitely built in whereby they bring in a lot of different expertise together. So when the, in these networks you'd see lawyers, you'd see investment bankers, you'd see VCs, you'd see founders coming in and investing and developing the ecosystem. Uh, the, the second uh, main element that I should, that I think should, uh, I believe that the, the, the market has to focus on is basically mentorship. As you rightfully outlined, today if we look at the investment landscape in the region here, I would say 70 to 80 percent are private family offices. The rest are corporates. The private family offices have invested within the last decade mainly on in real estate and conventional asset classes, specifically predominantly in real estate. So venture capital is quite new to them. So mentorship programs have to be developed. Currently, there are a couple of angel networks in the, in, in the region here that are doing so and enticing and encouraging uh, angel investing. So I think this is a core element where we need to basically, you know, you know, teach and, and develop the, uh, the, uh, the system. The third is, is, is basically incentives. Now, like, uh, very, like Far East Asia, 
incentives have been developed after mentoring you know, family offices, they need incentives. Saudi Arabia has, has recently developed a very interesting program. Uh, the, the fund of funds in Saudi Arabia has allocated a good uh, allocation from their portfolio to actually invest and support angel investors invest by providing matching funding programs. So that has enticed and driven a lot of the families to actually apply for the program and, 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 and invest. And, I, and I'm sure that other GCC countries will follow as well. Uh, and it's, it's, it's an excellent pilot. That kick-started everything in Korea and Singapore, yes. the matching, yeah. 100%. Yep. And I think the fourth, the fourth main element is, is, is basically uh, building up uh, the, uh, the, the, the infrastructure and, and the regulators, bringing in the regulators to basically put in a, uh, you know, putting a framework for the angel network, uh, for setting up angel funds and angel investment funds. So those are four very, very key things. I'm going to ask you, how many people have who would consider themselves angel investors here? Uh, what, less than 10? <laughs> so, I mean, that's a big issue, right? So, I mean, obviously, there's a lot of wealth and there's a lot of um, people who, who can make those investments. So, I think, what do you think, Hussain, that how do we get this audience to change and, and start getting involved, and not just attending conferences, but actually doing stuff? I think there is a lot of education needs to be done uh, in the part of government, in the part of the private sector, and in the part of uh, academia as well. So uh, I think we need to enforce this uh, uh, model of triple helix, more synergies between the various players, so we can develop a common language that everybody can understand. What's happening now is really there is a disconnect between the aspiration and the expectation of these investors, between the aspiration and the expectation of the academia, between the aspiration and expectation of the government. Uh, and the entrepreneurs is, is, is also another dimension to it. So I think uh, we need to develop a model in this region that is really our own model that, that, that is developed, you know, uh, taken into consideration our own characteristics in this part of the world, our own uh, uh, environment, our own uh, uh, culture, uh, and I think that's the way forward. The, w what's happening now is we try to bring whatever is happening in Silicon Valley or Singapore or China or, and um, impose it here by force. It's not going to work. I mean, we, we, we talk to, 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 if you go across the, 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 the GCC and talk to every um, individual body that is uh, responsible for uh, entrepreneurship, they will tell you the same thing. Uh, you know, that we invest, we, we encourage, but the result is, is not there. And I think that's the reason is, 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 is that we haven't spent time in developing the soft learnings uh, that we all understand. We speak uh, terminologies that most of us, uh, you know, we don't understand. So, so I think we need to uh, invest in education, encourage our colleges and universities to play a bigger role, and, and, and just, you know, minimize this, these silos that we have between the various sectors. I mean, that's what changed in Asia was when everyone stopped looking at the US and started thinking about how to do it themselves. So how do you, how do, you do that? I mean, where's, the, where's that education going to come from? Who's going to take the initiative to, to do that? I think we have very good universities. We have very good talents. We have very good uh, caliber of, 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 of educator. We just need to empower them. And, and if you look at, at China or in, 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 in US or in Europe, universities plays a bigger role. So the government, I think, it has to promote the role of universities and give them chance to, 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 to just get out of their box because at the moment they just, you know, they're sitting there, you know. And we have an example I can share with you in Sharjah, which is, which is the, we like to claim that we are the, the capital of education in the UAE. And we have a city, uh, the university city with, for those who visit Sharjah, which hosts 47,000 students, 17 institutions. We spend 1.5 billion uh, dollars every year in education, and 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 we, we we three years ago we started to do different things with with the culture we have. So I think education is key, and 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 as government we have to start, in my opinion, slow down, and start to create models that we all contribute to it, and it's not imposed from top. It has to be bottom up, in my opinion. So. Well, just before we come to the founders aspect, which is going to be, I'm going to, talk, to turn to Mohammed here. So, um, uh, how do you? So you're doing fantastic work with the corporates, which are key here, 
to get them to, to move to the cloud, to understand how to, to move into new technologies, et cetera, which is a key part because the corporates really have to get involved in the startup sector, um, which they don't really do here. How do you, how, what else do you see, from, following on from Hussain's point around education? Um, I'll, I'll get to that point, but if you don't mind, I'd like to just go back to the point Khalid was making yeah. with respect to investors investing in the market and the sentiment around seed, seed stage investment. Seed stage investment is one of the riskiest parts, or if not the riskiest part, of the entire investment life spectrum of a company. It's kind of why companies are looking primarily at growth stage investments, uh, especially in the region. Uh, if you have a concern around uh, your, the protection related to your investment, your ability to pull your capital out in the event something goes wrong, then what's going to end up happening is you're most likely not going to make that investment. Um, in other parts of the world, what we've seen are, are, are areas where they have uh, significant investment protection rules and regulations. Uh, Bahrain has now implemented its uh, bankruptcy laws. Uh, company, countries in the region have started to follow on suit, and at the same time, you have other entities like Lebanon with Circular 331 that are also introducing mechanisms to kind of lower that risk for a person that's taking that seed stage investment. Uh, so ultimately, I would say that while seed stage investment is limited as of now, it's growing with the fact that we're putting in place those mechanisms in the region to protect investors where we're still facing some challenges. And it's nice to talk about building alliances and building consortiums, and we've been trying to work with our partners in doing that as well. But beyond that, uh, if the investor doesn't feel protected, and then second, they don't feel that their investment is frictionless, they're not gonna want to invest. Yep, um, and right now, unfortunately, in pretty much every jurisdiction in this region, if you wanna make an investment at a seed stage in a company, uh, it's not only a zero-sum game, which we've been lowering to allow that uh, to, 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 to not be a zero-sum game, but it's also a traumatic experience to both the company and the investor. Because the company and the investor have to dedicate that when they want to br onboard that investor, roughly about two weeks at best, to start onboarding that investor into that process. So neither of them really wants to engage until they're both feeling comfortable enough that they're growing. So our focus for us now is as we start looking at uh, the entire ecosystem of investment, and specifically seed, is how do I make sure that investor feels protected? And how do I make sure that that investment on its own is frictionless? As soon as you start getting into that spectrum and you start solving for those things, you're going to start seeing corporates uh, which uh, have an interest in, uh, this is to your second question, which have an interest in actually innovating and don't have the internal capacity to build. In saying, look, we're not just gonna get into a service level contract with a company to deliver something. We're gonna have that comp company either, we're gonna buy them, we're gonna acquire them, it's gonna be a quick process, we're gonna take a stake in them, and as long as they feel that process is, is frictionless, they're more likely to take that risk and, and make that assumption with that company. That way they can quickly pivot if it's not working. Right now, if they were to try to make that, if they were to try to do uh, an investment in a company uh, to, to deliver services, they cannot pivot. Um, that's, that's what our goal in Bahrain is, is, is really to look at those two parts of, of the spectrum on, on the investment side and to help in trying to resolve them with the, with the private sector. Perfect. I mean, that's, that's excellent. So, I mean, is this the place to come and do business then, Mirza? This is. Um, see, right now, the region is buzzing with all the startups and the ecosystem and everybody. There is so much encouragement being set to be on that scale. And what I hear right now is about a lot that we need to be uh, incentivizing the private sector to get involved because I think all will agree that the governments here are playing a good role. Everywhere in all the Arab world, especially in GCC, Bahrain, Saudi, UAE, everywhere the governments are pushing a lot where they're trying to say that, you know, let's go towards the startups. I want to bring in a different factor to the same thing, saying, you know what, not just show them the incentives, show them the threat side also. When we are educating the people, we, are, we should be telling everybody, look, the world is going through a digital transformation. AI is going to change our life in the future. 
Now, if we don't change ourselves now, we will be lost. So all those comfort zones where we think that our investments are there and there is as a trading mindset that we are getting those returns, it won't be coming anymore in the future. Alibabas of the world will take over. No, if that is being provided or mentored or educated, maybe from the government side to the corporate sector, to the owners and the wealth funds of the region saying, you know what? It's going to change in the coming, and it's, the change is coming in very fast. So if you want to really exist in the future, you have to invest on that aspect now, and what better that you invest on those entrepreneurial mindset which are in your part of the world. Otherwise, you will still end up on the consumer side, not on the producer side. And we have all that capacity. We have the talent. We can do pure innovation. Normally, when we look at the innovation being done in the region, it's being done as a replica, some model which has worked somewhere else, and we build a local replica. What we need to be encouraged from the government side, as well as the private sector, is to come up with pure innovation, something which we can build here and sell to the rest of the world. Now, let's follow on that point. So we um, at Spark Labs have, have partnered with Phase Ventures in, in Amman and with PDO to drive a, a long-term five-year project. And that five-year project for PDO is R&D, education, local jobs. So, you know, over-reliance on, you know, outsourced consultancies like Wipro, et cetera, you know, why is the money going there? The, the talent and, and information is, is being lost. Knowledge is being lost. It needs to come here, like coming to your point, as you go local, as you go to the cloud, like that should be locals helping with that, education, et cetera. So that, that's what PDO and Amman is like really, really pushing towards. Now, I want to come onto this point because I think this is a key point. Like, so I want you guys to have a talk about like R&D, how do we go towards deep tech? Like one of the things in, in Singapore has changed is that, you know, Singapore is driving very, very hard on deep tech. There's an over-reliance on e-commerce and marketplace, not much else. So like getting the stuff out of the universities, cyber, et cetera. So I want you guys to have a, a chat about this because I think this is a key point. We need local companies that are going to be doing more than just you know, websites um, to, be, to be really involved. Yeah, I, I, I want to mention something here about the R&D part. And that's, the, that's what needs to be more done again uh, from the government side. Though they are putting in a lot on the R&D side, the private sector has to get involved. This is why I set it up, because I went through the pain in the last 20, 22 years trying to build uh, technology here. One of the gaps which I felt was that we don't have a private R&D companies who are really doing the R&D of the scale where we can help the entrepreneurs on this end, in this end. So that has to be channeled rightly. There has to be more uh, sort of uh, communities working together across the region who are more focused on R&D aspect. I think... Yeah, I mean, Khaled, the yeah. same? So, yeah. yeah. How are you I, going to change it? You're, you're going to be very deeply involved in the angel community, so you've got to get people in, investing in this. In terms, uh, in terms of the angel community, in addition to the angel community, what I think is we need to attract talent as well. Now, talent is, is, is in place here, but there are certain sectors that we lack talent in. And, and, and in order to do that, we need to bring in, basically, you know, partnerships with, 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 with certain jurisdictions and countries that bring in that. Now, Deep Tech, uh, for example, Far East Asia has been, has been quite active on, on the deep, te deep Tech side. We need to bring in partners and, and build partnerships to bring in talent, to bring in the technology, to bring in the know-how to support the ecosystem. Uh, I mean, and Mohamed, so you, you've pushed a lot of the banks to be very innovative on the cloud. That puts Bahrain in quite an interesting position in the region. How do you, do you think there's a, an opportunity for the banks to take advantage of that? Uh, yeah, look, our, our goal with the banks is, is A, get, get the law out of the way as much as possible so that you have, again, frictionless momentum to do whatever you want to do. Get tender processes and things limited, get audit requirements minimized uh, so that they, when they take, when they decide to take a stab at it, they can, and we spend a lot of time talking to banks about, uh, you know, design, architecture. Uh, think about what your core business is. How can your core business change? Uh, are, are you buying a product that fits your core business, or are you buying something because 
you know, everybody needs to buy, and uh, you, you know, nobody got fired for buying an IBM, yep. right? Um, the, so, so I think you're finding a, a greater willingness from these companies to engage in that space. What you're still finding limitations on is talent pool. Um, and even when these companies act actively want to engage, they often don't know where to find that talent to help them engage with it. That's why they spend a lot of time becoming customers of, of companies outside, um, because it's a, you know, a three-, four-year process to build, to build the talent internally. So we spend a lot of time with schools and universities. We spend a lot of time building out vocational training programs and making those vocational training programs free. And we're working on initiatives to help facilitate private sector investment into, uh, into R&D, into, uh, into these companies and building out, uh, building out that space. Because again, it's all, all about trying to, to remove the friction from those, that element. Now, the, the, the talent pool that we've been developing in Bahrain with respect to cloud, and cloud is an interesting one because EDB is very project driven. So we don't like to get into theoretical exercises, typically, without a project sitting on the other end of the spectrum. Uh, Amazon gave us one of those projects that we could actively work on. We recognized a 40% year-on-year growth in cloud in the region. We recognized 500,000 people as a gap globally in trying to uh, move cloud services on. And we said, well, look, this is a particular sector where we can really make a dent in the, in the market. Because now we have, we have the ability to do what, for instance, Intel did in Israel, uh, which was uh, have a company that is generating talent and that is outputting that talent back into the industry so that that talent is there and investable for companies that are looking to do R&D because it's trained up. Again, this is a five-year process. And when, whenever it comes down to R&D, it's never going to be an overnight process. You have to, uh, countries like Singapore, which have billions of dollars in funding in their R&D budgets. Um, Bahrain doesn't have that today. So we look at the resources that we already have, uh, which are uh, schools, universities, um, companies, and we actively engage and work with them uh, on building out the talent pools that are investable. Yeah, I like Terrific. To build I mean, that's exactly it. That's without that, that's yeah. how we're going to change. Yeah, I like to yeah. build on, 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 on the role of, 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 of R&D institutions and, and technology transfer uh, uh, institutions. I mean, it's a global trend where you would find thriving you know, you know, investors uh, and, 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 and business and private sectors around education campuses around the world. Uh, so we need those type of institutions to be able, okay, we, the, the digitization part is good. It's, it's, you know, we need online business, et cetera, but there is deep science opportunities that we can develop and we can nurture in this part of, of, the, of the world. So I think we need to, to also focus on, on, on those parts of it. In UAE, recently, we, uh, the government mandated all the universities now to become a free zones. So universities will start to sign up companies, give license, and, 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 and set up uh, entrepreneurs. So the whole education in the UAE system has been, has been, has been, has been changed toward, 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 toward this. And I think, uh, you know, uh, uh, with Bahrain, I think Bahrain is a great city and a great country to, 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 to really lead on, on certain, uh, you know, uh, uh, industries like finance, for example. And I think you have the talents here. You have the, a very good, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, government regulations. The environment is very positive. So, so I, think, uh, uh, I think, yes, the uh, role of education is, is key. And, and, and the private sector, we spoke about it earlier, I think. We need also the private sector to play a role because at the moment, in our part of the world, the private sector, when they come to, 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 to supporting, uh, let's say, entrepreneurship, they, they come from a background of corporate social responsibility. And that has to change, I think. I think the government can play a role. And, and, and in the way we are calling for, instead of you know, corporate social responsibility, corporate research or deep science responsibility. So these companies have to embed an integral part of their budget allocated to research. And that's the only way I think we can, we, because we don't charge them taxes, right? So there's no incentives for them to, to really contribute. So it has to have a structure. Yeah, I want to just add because uh, Bahrain has had this policy of cloud first already for the government as well. So they have, they're already encouraging. AWS is here. Now it, 
is more on the private sector to adopt this cloud, which you're rightly doing with the banking sector, but even the IT organizations which are servicing, they, because we have a lot of IT companies here, they need to be getting on that, not, uh, and they need to be encouraged somehow or maybe incentivized from the government side. And the government at the same time trying to find out some quick wins. When we say quick wins is that if there are companies who are more focused on big data, analytics, and they can prove some, then the government should be encouraging or supporting them and highlighting them. That Perfect. quick wins will encourage them, change the mindset overall. Okay, well, this is great. So, I mean, I think, um, Kyle, we were talking earlier about, like, we need a, a document which says how things are going to change. I think what we're going to do, Danny, is we're going we're gonna to take this panel's transcript and we're going to write it up and release it as uh, a blueprint for change. So, I'm going to the last quick question. So, if you're a startup here in the region, um, or if you're a founder and you're thinking about going to, what, ask, I'm going to ask you, what two things, what two sectors do you think that are really interesting for the region to be strong in as a founder? I want to, you know, I want to get in, what do you think is going to be a great sector to get into that's going to be strong in the region? Me first? Yeah. Um, so so I, founders I have two sectors in mind uh, to that question. What I would first say is follow your passion, because if you're not passionate about it, the road to being a startup is rife with difficulty. And this is, this is, not, this is not a rosy follow your, your, your passion thing, because you're going to feel pain. Uh, you're going you're, you're gonna to go through ups and downs. And if you're not passionate about what you're doing, then you're going to drop it. Um, but beyond following your passion, where I see potential synergies and a lot of opportunity personally is, first of all, anything cloud. Uh, cloud's growing at a rate of 40% year on year. Everybody's moving into software as a service, as a format. The CapEx is decreasing. The, everything is decreasing in this space. So anything cloud. F FinTech is a huge opportunity. Uh, Bahrain's really taking the lead here. Yep. Um, with our new open banking standards and the regulator being open, uh, there's an opportunity for private sector companies that are looking to uh, function on the ad adjacencies of banks and to pick up opportunities there, and then potentially even to become challengers themselves, yep. to connect into people's bank accounts and offer added value services. That's huge. And then the last point I'd make, uh, or the last sector I would look at, is IoT uh, and slash AI. Um, there, the opportunities in Bahrain in particular are tremendous. Across the region, they're, they're quite high. But just to give you a couple of examples. Well, in we're going to have to keep Go moving. On. Yeah, so quickly. I, I would definitely We've got three agree, there, perfect. definitely agree with Sheikh. In yeah. addition, uh, you know, IoT, yeah. definitely, yes, is, is, is a major is sector. A big, yeah. Specifically, you know, when you are linked to Greater Bay China, which is today the hardware yeah. city of the world. Uh, and I think we already have that in Bahrain through, through, yeah. through a leading accelerator. Perfect. Yeah. Mazza? OK. Um, I just want to make one point. I know time stops. The part that seconds. you mentioned, the, the passion part, also uh, add to that that if somebody wants to set up a company, then they need to solve a problem which they are being impacted with as well or their community is being impacted. So good. that that can be scaled. And Excellent. then I go with yours with the Very fintech good. part and cybersecurity, I'll Cyber add to that. Well. That's my yep. idea. I think digitization. Sorry? Digitization. Just digitization, yeah, which is a big thing. Great. Thank you very much to the panel. Thank you very much for everyone here. Thank you.